Alright, hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today, yet again, we're going to be presenting to you, well, I'm going to be, a new video. Let's just jump straight into it. So, first combat, we're going to be fighting a Pyromancer. What's the first play? Party up, evidently. That's just the number one rule against any player. And now what you're going to see me is, you're going to see me approach whilst parrying. The reason we're using the two-hander to parry is because that way we make sure we take zero damage from the fireball. For those who don't know, Pyro's uncharged fireball can be parried and blocked. Uh, parry is better though since you take you pretty much mitigate any chip damage whatsoever and as you saw there uh, we managed to get the pyro to bait his e and when he has no e it's pretty much a free kill especially if you've got two dashes and anyway, now jumping into a third party now obviously here it's not like i really have the choice to fight anyone i choose to fight this dk simply because it looks better geared but either way both of them are wearing exceptionals Go for the classic, block into parry against the mason shield charge attack. For those of you who don't know, that is how you counter it. And here, we're gonna get griefed by the rocks, or the physics in this game, and the DK is gonna disengage for a bit, but it's okay. We'll catch back because we're fighter. We're faster than DK's, plus we got our two dashes. Closing the gap. Managed to Kobe him with a thunder blast. And now here, um, he manages to take away my dragon scale with the initial hit, which is good. The problem is this guy tried to disengage even though he knew I'm a fighter, which is the wrong play. If you're a DK and there's a fighter chasing you, you realistically stand no chance of running away. So his best play would have been to try and fight back. Although wearing Mason Shield and dual, uh, dual Swords is honestly a horrible combination since you don't have any tools to deal with charge attacks. Just remember that if you're playing with dual swords, you either need a two-hander or a sword and shield. Otherwise, you're doomed against melees. Anyway, here... I'm fighting against another fighter here. Uh, I let go of that attack because I know that the trade benefits me, especially with the implementation of Dragon Scale. And here what you're going to see me is do a bit of conditioning. And as you can see, this guy's pairing because he's a one-shot. So what I'm doing is I'm conditioning to believe I'm going to throw light attacks and then I finish him off with a heavy since he expected a light. Get third party by the rogue. No problemo. We get petrified. That's perfectly fine. Now the rogue, we see that he's staying to fight. So my thought process right now is, okay, I need to try and dash away from the Thunder Flask, or at least try and get cover so that I can evade hours more easily. So I'm going to use the trunk to kind of make, mitigate the chance of him hitting me. And what I'm going to be doing is you're going to see me jumping and shifting. Um, this is to ensure he struggles hitting me. We dash in so that he can't shoot our weak spots, right? If a rogue is right in front of you, it is almost impossible for them to... Uh, what's it called? It's almost impossible for them to hit your legs or your uh, head, which are normally weak spots when using the shield. But if you're right in front of them, you pretty much force them to disengage. And here, obviously, we saw... Uh, what's it called? Death, uh, whatever that set bonus is called. Activate, so we know this guy is low. And here, we keep going for charge attacks. The reason you want to go for charge attacks against rogues is because if they block an attack with their daggers, they get propelled backwards, giving them a lot of kiting space. Um, quick note, note too, um, it is better to just go for charge attacks and not follow up since they can block this, uh, the following hits. So just commit to full charge attacks and you should realistically kill them if they've got no Q ability. Anyway, here we're going to be engaging a druid. Here you can see me also using my leggy daggers. Now right now I'm not doing a very good job at hitting him with the legendary daggers. I do use them to engage quickly since, you know, they cover a lot of distance. Use them against his human form and here... To be fair, I should have probably just uh, grabbed my two-hander. With the two-hander, it's much easier to hit moving targets like this, and you can swing. Uh, the hitbox of the two-hander is active for a lot of frames, and you can just hit. But even then, sadly, the little guy was a little blue timmy. You know, hashtag fix matchmaking. <coughs> anyway, uh, and here you're going to see another example. Now here, um, the reason I put these two clips here is solely to kind of complain about matchmaking. Um, like, look at this, bro. I, I three-shot this guy because of the gear disparity. Why is this guy in my lobby, right? He's wearing three purples and whites. But anyway, with that out of the way, back to some actual gameplay. Here, you're going to see a three-man fight. So, obviously, we engage this guy first. Hits us with the whirlwind. Perfectly fine now. Pro tip here, actually, the best play is to actually just, like, parry and activate Q. And just parry Q all the time. But it's fine. Uh, fighter tries to dash behind us to evade the parry. Good uh, good intention, but the problem was there was a wall right there, so he couldn't. Anyway, tries to run away, dies because he gives the back to us. Dash away to avoid the parry punish. And there we Thunder Flask him simply to heal up and let him deal with the little, the little monster, the little fly, I don't know what they are. 
And as you can see right now, I don't know if you noticed, but this guy right now is using the mistake. You can tell by the fact that that longsword is purple. The mistake is essentially a weapon that heals you to max health once killing someone. Use this whirlwind here. We're going to use the daggers. As you can see, we're being propelled backwards. This is what I was saying about the rogue before. Daggers are very good to disengage. Fire party. Fire party against melee classes is better than throwing thunder flasks since even if it's less damage, you're pretty much preventing them from healing for 50%, which is actually pretty big. Uh, heal parties normally heal 30 HP per second, so that's just diminished to 15. And you're gonna see here some nice trades. Dash away again to avoid the parry punish. Um, definitely worth disengaging since that parry punish would have probably left us at one hit. And here we're just gonna reset. Uh, whenever you have the chance to reset, it is always gonna be worth taking unless your opponent is low and you know they cannot kite you. Uh, simply because of the fact that you always have the third party risk. So here I just, you know, I fully heal up. I acknowledge that he's probably going to be healed up, but that's perfectly fine. We're confident in our skill and we're confident that we can take him out. Not very good wall there since it pretty much gets him no time. What he could have done is close the door and use a fire pot to get more time in. But anyway, here you can see us use the daggers now. Initially, what I was trying to do, that was trying to bait a parry. Um, if you hit people with uh, daggers, you can swap quickly to the two-hander and counter the parry punish of a person, as you can see right there. And here we go for this heavy to trade. I knew he was going to commit and we finish him off. This is just overall HP knowledge. I knew the guy was low, so I knew I could afford to go for these trades. It's something that comes with experience, but it's a very good skill to have. It's a very good skill to have because, well, it essentially just lets you finish off people quicker in a lot of such areas. Anyway, collect the loot from the Fallen Fighters. And we're going to be moving on now. Now here you're going to see the clip that well, essentially you'll see in the thumbnail of the video today. I lose a million gold. Like, look at my inventory right now. You're going to check this. Now, the reason I'm waiting here is because I'm waiting for the static. I just want to get out of here. Look, an Undice Legendary and around 200,000 uh, gold worth inventory right there, right? I accidentally entered the lobby. And here what you're going to see is I thought this guy was a fighter. And to my, to my disappointment, it's not a fighter, it's a priest. Now, priest currently is the strongest 1v1 character, at least when it comes to melee in the game. He has very little to no counter, except rogue potentially. So obviously right now, I'm just trying to get out of there as soon as possible. I cannot win this fight, it is just not possible. Uh, what I should have done there is I should have closed the door and fire pot it to stop him from opening it, but due to me panicking, I stopped that. Obviously he catches up with Thunder Flask, stops our charged daggers from activating. And here, I panic. I could have used my Q to dash away and you know disengage, but obviously my brain was panicking. I was low, I was missing health. And we die. Ow. Oh, he's stuck. He's stuck. <laughs> he's stuck. We can just chip at him. <laughs> hey, it's over. It's over, homie. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. <laughs> Yo, Clownfish, how are you doing? How's the weather down there? <laughs> this is like the second time I killed Clownfish by trapping him somewhere. <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> There's no way! Oh my god. Every single time I've killed Clownfish is because of BS. Look, Clownfish, wanna see your, wanna see your buddy? Oh! <laughs> what are these lobbies, bro? What's going on? <laughs> My guy was just chilling there. <laughs> Dude, I'm actually being fed kills. It's not even funny. I'm literally just being... Probably late September or start of October. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, legendary key. I, I died from this guy today. I see him in lobbies pretty often. 
on my green only fighter. Well, yeah.